It's fiddle time with wood nail and hammer. Yes, you've seen the title. I'm doing it out of pine again. Since my previous guitar build project was a reasonable success, I kind of figured. Let's take pine to the next level. Let's see if pine can build a fiddle. Now guys and girls, I know. The old masters 300 years ago with their professional luthier caves didn't prefer to use pine because pine is not a good tonal wood. It's a soft wood, it cracks easily, it breaks easily, it's disastrous, it's cheap skate, the dark will run away, I've heard it all. Don't get me wrong, greatest respect for those guys, they've built excellent instruments, I love them all, but... I'm not the old masters, I'm not 300 years old, this is not a professional luthier cave, this is my backyard and this is where we do it the pine way. So you'll notice me doing a million things different from what the old masters used to do. A million things will break, a million things will be fixed. But it will be shaped like a fiddle. I hope it will sound like a fiddle. And if it doesn't, at least it will be beautiful. Guys and girls, I don't always demonstrate the safest ways in doing things, since my video is not intended to be a safety tutorial. The equipment I'm using is highly dangerous and can cause serious injuries. So if you'd like to attempt anything you see in my video, kindly consider whether you're willing to take the risk. And if not, find yourself safer alternatives. It's that easy. This is a part of the project where you pop the big question. Do I have enough grams? Truth is you never really do. Please subscribe and like and share and comment and support my channel and one day when I'm rich and famous I might be able to afford more. Grams. Also follow the link in the description and maybe I can become a 300 year old master with a professional Facebook cave and do <laughs> Facebook, Facebook page and Luthier cave. It's just a button, click it, follow man. Until then, the backyard cave will have to do.
I'm starting the top and back plates by cutting a raised panel shape on the table saw in order to reduce the amount of hand carving to be done. But this does not need to be done on a table saw. You can also do this by using chisels and carving tools. Does anybody have a smaller pencil than me? Tell me in the comments. These measurements indicate the approximate depths I'm going to cut with the router machine on different parts of the plate. Some people prefer to do this with a drill press, I prefer a router machine as it does a cleaner cut of it and it will surely save you a lot of carving to be done by hand. Now it doesn't matter how many machines you have, at some point in time you're gonna have to grab a red chisel and start your digging.
Guys and girls, I'm seriously close to the edge here. Please press the subscribe button so one day, when I'm rich and famous, I can buy a new pencil. The last machine I'd ever thought I'd use in making a violin is an angle grinder, but the flat disc proves to be quite effective in quickly sanding away your carving marks. If you want to do this, you seriously need to have a light hand. This thing takes big bites at a time. One slip of the hand and your arching is gone. This wasn't due to the angle grinder, this was a bad glue joint that uh, started coming loose and I gently removed this piece, cleaned it up and I'm going to glue it again. Told you something's going to break, but much more where that comes from. That was the back plate, and this is the front plate. Just take a look at that little defect right there. Plan A was to maneuver the f holes into such a position that I can just cut out the hole. But this is how far I'd have to move it off the middle line. And that was way too far. So I decided, keep the airfoils where they should be, add some wood filler, and don't hide it. Put it on YouTube so the whole world can see. Since I don't have a coping saw, I'm using various sizes of drill bits to shape the airfoils, and I'll be finishing that off with uh, files and sanding paper.
This is how you make a mistake. This is how you realize you made a mistake. And this is how you fix your mistake. So basically I was supposed to sand down to the line before cutting off the sides since after cutting off the sides you don't really have a line to sand it down to. So I glued it back together again, did the sanding and then removed the sides again. The Kimberley Open Pit Mine is claimed to be the deepest hole excavated by hand. Now if those guys could manage that, I guess I can manage the rest of this little pick box. This side didn't work out too bad. This side was a total disaster. Told you something will break. So plan A to fix this was to glue in a little dowel and recall it. But that didn't work out. So plan B and you guessed it. Wood filler. Now the wood filler alone is very brittle and it will break again easily. But it proved to be quite effective when you varnish it, so I had to rebuild it again by that time. But I'm quite surprised with how good that worked out.
So this is my setup for cutting the neck joint using the router machine. Once again you don't have to do it this way, you can also carve that by hand. It was quite difficult seeing the lines on the stained ribs, so therefore I had to use some extra lighting. I wish more things could be this easy. You just copy and paste. Now removing the mold in order to do the interior linings was definitely not that easy. Don't ask me how, just take my word for it, it was done. I know Luthiers only use glue in vial and neck joints but I decided to do a threaded inset similar like a bolt on mortise and tenon joint on a guitar neck. This wasn't a very easy decision, it's quite risky, but I decided I'll feel much better with the extra support in the neck joint. Has anybody ever done this before? Please tell me in the comments. It was really tricky drilling the hole for the threaded insert at the correct projection angle, and every turn of the Allen key was surely nerve wracking hoping that the heel block doesn't crack or break. Shortly after I stopped the camera, I gave the threaded insert one final turn and the heel block did actually crack. So there's your bad news for this minute of the video. I filled the crack with glue, clamped it, left it overnight and hoped for the best. If you want to say pine is a soft wood, now is a good time. I was going to say look ma, no clamps. But can you believe what that clamping pressure did to the heel block? That thing used to be flush. Surprisingly, that didn't affect the projection angle. So I decided, let's just make a little band aid. And that's the clamp. I used this 6mm dowel from a local hardware store for the sound post and it only came to mind afterwards that this might be the only piece in the instrument that's not fine. I suspect this is actually Maranti. Now since I don't have all that fancy sound post adjusting equipment to insert the sound post later, I decided to just use a tiny bit of glue to keep it in place while closing the box. Has anybody else ever done it this way? Please let me know in the comments. You must have noticed throughout the project that I use standard wood glue while Luthiers actually use a hot glue that can easily be heated up again for the purpose of opening the instrument in order to do some repairs. And that brings the question, what if there's any future repairs that needs to be done on this instrument? Now I'm just going to say it again in case anybody missed it. This is a backyard fiddle made out of pine and I'm not really foreseeing the possibility that it will last a lifetime. But let's just say it lives to be a hundred. And somebody on that day feels the deeply buried desire to rip this thing apart and do some repairs. I can tell you one thing. It won't be me. Since I don't have a wood lathe, I always wanted to turn my drill press into a mini lathe. So I decided let's make the tuner pegs and end pin out of pine as well. I then started making this round shape on the belt sander before going over to the drill press.
These are the little turning gadgets I made for the drill press. And since I did most of the rounding on the belt sander, I decided to also only use sanding paper on the drill press. I might as well give you the bad news right now. These pine tuners didn't work out and I was kind of expecting that so I did buy a backup set of tuners. So there's your exception on this project in addition to the Maranti sound post. You definitely want to get yourself a proper set of ebony or rosewood tuners. The pine tuners will help you out once or twice but they won't take you far. I managed to become the proud owner of a brand new pencil, but I would still appreciate it if you can press subscribe so one day when I'm rich and famous, I can buy a new sanding belt. Since the bridge is also made out of pine, I decided not to cut out the two little feet at the bottom and to rather leave that solid in order to make it a bit stronger. I also made it slightly thicker than the standard thickness, but I was a bit skeptical on how that would affect the sound of the instrument. Tell me in the comments what you guys think. Now you could have two clamps, or you could be the majority shareholder of the World Clam Bank. It doesn't really matter. There's just always going to be a day where you need to do it the caveman way.
If you believe pine is not a good tonal wood, put it in the comments. I love hearing from you. This instrument totally exceeded my expectations. Considering that it's built from pine, it sounds exceptionally good. I'm surprised by how easily it tuned and I love playing this. Thank you so much for watching and please press subscribe so I can take proper violin playing lessons. See you in the next one.